All right, we got Brent Reed, Heath Cordet, Cordes, Cordy, Cordes. Hey, Alex, how do you spell or how do you say Heath Cordes' name? Is it Cordes? Cordial cherries or some shit? Little consensuals? Heath Cordes. So it's our second iteration of Nobody Cares Comedy Show. We have Heath Cordial Cherries, Cordial. those delicious little cherries that are like, mm, is this right, is this wrong? That's pretty much Heath in a fucking nutshell. We, got, we just cleaned up, uh, set the bar up, the bar set. But the fun's not over. We did a bunch of hot laps in the go-kart. JT took the comics off-roading on the dirt track. We worked at some skits, cleaned up some jokes, and now everyone's arriving at Pink 79 to watch Heath and Brent Reed crush the best house gig you're probably not invited to. Feeling a little bit nervous, huh? Yeah. Hell yeah. Look like brothers. All right, we're All right, we ready? Ready? Yeah. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, let's go. Absolutely fantastic. He just won the golden ticket on Kill Tony. This guy's been crushing all over town. Please put your hands together for the one and only Pete Cordes, ladies and gentlemen. What's up? Yeah. Very happy to be here. I just moved to Austin. Uh, and I like it here a lot, but there are a couple times I've gotten confused. Like one time I was walking down 6th Street and there was this guy on his phone talking to an Instagram Live. And he saw me and he goes, yo, look at that vaping baby. And he goes, hey little baby, blow some clouds. So I blew some clouds, I entertained the man. And then he saw my tattoos and wanted me to show those off. So I showed them this one right here and I showed him this one. And then I showed him my penis in the alley. <laughs> he tricked me. I ran into this other guy walking across 7th, broke his legs with my car. <laughs> Whoopsies. <laughs> I just moved out of my grandma's. Living with grandma, it wasn't too bad, but uh, we had our run-ins with each other. Like, my grandma, she likes to bake, like, cookies, cake, brownies, you name it. And I smoke a lot of weed, so portion control is not my strong suit. And I would eat this shit up as fast as grandma could make it. And she would always tell me how it pissed her off. But she still made the sweets. She was like a pimp feeding crack to her bitch. I'd have to peck for cookies. I'd say, please, Grandma, please. She'd say, shut your ass up. <laughs> She'd say, get out, bitch. Mm. And if she was hard to budge, I'd do what I had to do, and I, I suck Grandma's dick. <laughs> I'd say, the blacks are going to hell, and so are the gays. Now give me a cookie. And it worked every time. I have no shame. <laughs> my grandma, she was a very homophobic lady, kind of racist, but very homophobic. And no, I don't agree with either of those things, but I still realize that you can look past it and choose love. And me, I'm gonna choose love any time. Free food and shelter is involved. And plus, not to sound cruel, but she's gonna die in like 20 minutes anyways. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. Homophobic babies, I'll beat the shit out of them. <laughs> serve social justice one big and a baby at a time. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Funny thing though with grandma is um, I'd spend time with her when we watched game shows and Hallmark together and she absolutely loved it but um, I think that's gayer than hot jizz on my forehead. <laughs> I don't know. One time I thought I made my grandma disappear like in Home Alone. <laughs> Anyone can do it. You just gotta take LSD and Benadryl. <laughs> 
One morning before the sun was up, I was tripping really hard, and my grandma comes in my room, and she tells me to turn off the TV and to go to bed. So I take a piece of Benadryl, and as I'm drifting off, I'm thinking, I hate living here. I wish I lived alone. And when I wake up from my Benadryl slumber, my grandma's not in the living room. She's not in her room. I check the garage, but her car's still there. What the fuck? It worked. <laughs> So I ran around naked and whacked off. <laughs> she was just in the bathroom. <laughs> I need to get a job again. I'm getting pretty broke. I, uh, I used to have a job at Cracker Barrel as a host, and that was one of the easiest jobs I ever had, just taking people to tables. But I wasn't very good at it, and I know this, because some jackass named Philip told me so. <laughs> One day while I was at my podium, Philip comes up to me and he tells me that he's in a party of five, but he's the only one there and he needs to be seated at a table right now. I tell Philip I'm sorry, but it's policy for at least four or more members of the party to be present until they can be seated. And Philip says to me, no, 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 I'm going to be seated right now. And then he calls me a little shit. <laughs> and I say, whoa, Philip, there's no need for name calling. You're going to have to show me some respect. And Philip says to me, respect's not given, it's earned. Well, shit, he got me there. With that poorly used cliche, it's like, well, in that case, Philip, let's go ahead and seat you at this big-ass table and break the rules just so I can hear some gratitude out your mouth. And you know what, Philip? Fuck this chair. Why don't I get down on all fours and you can sit on my goddamn back? <laughs> How's that sound? <laughs> I got scoliosis, but you can do it if you call me sir. <laughs> but I didn't say that to Philip like I wanted to. It's not my nature. So sadly, what really happened after he called me a little shit was I just sat on like a bitch and then I cried like one. <laughs> My dream is to become a comedian. That's my dream, but I'd be lying if I said it was the only one because when I close my eyes to go to bed at night, I sometimes have a dream about running into Philip again one day. <laughs> that way I can show that old man that someone still cares about him and maybe even make his little heart grow right before I crush it with everything I have. <laughs> Because the most important part of this dream I have is the part where I force my testicles into Philip's mouth. <laughs> and he tries to bite them off and spit them out as anyone would, but he can't because they're deep in there and I already took his dentures out. <laughs> so it just looks like he's teething on my testes for a bit until I eventually hold his nose and give him the sweet release of death. <laughs> <laughs> so I may not be working, but I'm definitely working shit out. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You've been amazing. <laughs> guys, he's going to us one more time, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. If Matt McWilliams telling, calls uh, you and uh, says, you want to go to Bernie? You say, fuck yeah. Take it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, never land yeah. for people who listen to Joe Rogan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> That's so yeah, true. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was so much fun, Joe. Yeah. Come on. Tomorrow. Tomorrow we're not getting blackout drunk for the show. Anyway, it's just But tonight we are. All right. All right. All right. All right. Now it's decided. Somebody give Heath the Capri Sun. That'll do it for him. I don't get it. Alcohol. Get her done. That'll get it. Get her done. Like you're trying to hang out with a bunch of rednecks. Get her done.